So our next speaker is uh, Amar Vora, uh, a seasoned professional with a wealth of experience across the space industry. He's uh, currently uh, leading the growth and operations of Sierco based services in the Middle East. Okay, Amar, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Boris. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes, we can. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Firstly, uh, apologies on my side for not having my camera on uh, for various different reasons. Uh, and secondly, also just wanted to thank uh, Boris, uh, Alex, and the rest of the Space Tech uh, team for the invite to speak on this webinar today. So what I'll be speaking to you about is um, uh, less, I guess, technology focused and more around uh, space ecosystems across the GCC and, and, and key ingredients that uh, need to make up uh, an ecosystem. And I'll try to allude to certain activities and initiatives that have been established across the region as well, not only within Circo, but um, also across government and other actors. But before I do that, um, as uh, was introduced, uh, I'm Amar Vora, Head of Space for Circo in the Middle East. You may be asking yourself, who is Circo? Um, we pride ourselves in being the biggest company no one has ever heard of. Um, and that is something we're trying to change now going forward um, by uh, having uh, more visibility in the marketplace. So we are actually a global company, uh, global services company, and providing uh, public sector services into governments across 20 countries uh, and uh, operating out of five different regions. Uh, we operate across many different sectors, uh, transport, healthcare, uh, um, citizen services, defense, uh, justice and immigration, but also in, in space. And we've been operating in the space sector now since 1964 uh, through a service contract that we offer, uh, that we actually continue to, to operate uh, in the UK. Globally, uh, we have a footprint of around 2,000 uh, people um, operating in uh, over 10 countries. And the vast majority of our space-related services do sit in, in Europe, um, but we also provide services across the UK, North America, increasingly so now in the Middle East, uh, as we launched our division in the Middle East uh, earlier this year to support the growth of the national uh, space visions in the region. Uh, and also in uh, Australia is another area that we are continuing to grow. Uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier, we are a public uh, sector uh, provider, so public sector service provider, which means that we provide services direct to government. So some of our main customers in the market include the European Space Agency, uh, UMITSAT uh, in Germany, uh, UK Space Agency, MODs, US Space Force, uh, and, and various others across the ecosystem. And when it comes to services, uh, we... We uh, involve ourselves in uh, sort of impacting along the space value chain. Everything from um, supporting the European Space Agency with uh, upstream engineering um, support services. So a lot we have uh, we have several engineers uh, who are based uh, in uh, ESA itself, providing engineering services associated with spacecraft um, manufacturing, mission um, design all the way through to launch uh, integration and launch uh, services as well. Uh, we also um, operate quite significantly in the midstream, so more associated with the ground segment. So we uh, are the uh, key operators behind a, a, a major European uh, Union program known as, or European Commission program known as uh, Copernicus, which is uh, uh, constellation of Earth observation satellites that are managed by ESA. So we are the team of operators behind that. Um, and we also um, support uh, by managing the uh, ground segment infrastructure as well. Um, and not only that, we also start, we also involve ourselves more in the further in the downstream. So we, uh, we process data that comes out of these, out of the Sentinel satellites um, and, and disseminate them uh, to the user community. Uh, we also uh, process data from space situational awareness assets, um, in this case in the UK, uh, which uh, was the uh, first contract that I alluded to in the previous slide. Uh, and uh, we provide uh, uh, basically um, orbital analysts who uh, uh, can analyze um, space situational awareness data on behalf, in this case, of UK and US military. 
Um, and we also manage uh, a lot of the data ecosystem across in, uh, the European um, sector. So uh, we are currently engaged in various different initiatives uh, in Europe, uh, one being uh, on the DS, which is a data access platform uh, for user community, um, cloud-based platform. Um, but uh, recently this year, we were awarded a contract to uh, develop the Destination Earth core service platform. Destination Earth being uh, ESA's flagship a program to create a digital, well, it's actually a European Commission flagship program to create a digital twin of the Earth, uh, and DESP being the uh, the infrastructure or the platform to enable uh, this and providing uh, essentially a um, a marketplace and uh, a, 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 an infrastructure for uh, the user community to develop applications and to uh, to uh, uh, exploit the applications for the user communities um, going forward. And beyond this, we also develop applications uh, for numerous different use cases as well. So onto the core part of, of the presentation and that's around uh, ecosystems. And I'm not here trying to focus on anything specific to Circo, but more about where I see, how I see um, uh, the key priorities of uh, uh, space ecosystem developing within this region. So there are four different pillars. Um, First being talent, um, second being opportunities and the policies, as well as regulation that's established, the infrastructure, and finally, the importance of collaboration. And I'll talk a bit about each uh, in the next few slides. So first, talent. Um, I think not only in this region, but globally, we are seeing a, uh, a deficit of talent um, in, in the sector. And we do need to have more uh, initiatives and more programs to develop more talent to upskill uh, more people uh, and to, to really place a big more more emphasis on on people itself and I think that it that also stays true for this region itself uh, so we all know that the space sector in the GCC is still a developing sector um, uh, and with that comes I guess a growing ecosystem of talent some of which more um, uh, well established than others uh, with the infrastructure that um, is already established, um, but some still of a growing um, nature. So within a talent ecosystem, I think there are many different components. This is by no means um, uh, all of the components, but this is just some of the ones that I want to call, up, call out. One is, especially in this region, um, it's an imperative to for, for government to invest in talent. And what we're seeing now is more investment into the National Space Academies. We saw uh, at the Dubai Air Show an announcement from uh, the UAE Space, UAE Space Agency launching their own National Space Academy program. We are also seeing um, in Saudi Arabia a lot of initiatives uh, being uh, under development, essentially, um, to uh, provide, uh, to develop the, uh, a Saudi-based National Space Academy um, and um, improve the knowledge and skills I would say operational skills, which is really crit critical here. It's not just um, theoretical, but also operational skills um, of the next generation of local talent. Um, and this is also really a core part of sustainability within the ecosystem is nurturing local talent. Yes, there is there is talent that we can call upon from the global space community. Um, but in order to sustain the growth of the space ecosystem in this region, uh, it's, it's important to, to, to invest in local talent. We're also starting to see more and more uh, uh, academic institutions uh, uh, establish their own essentially educational programs as well as R&D programs. And we're starting to see a lot more industry and government collaboration to support uh, the development of these uh, programs. Uh, one, for example, being, I think it was last week or maybe earlier this week, um, the Saudi Space Agency announcing a partnership with a key academic entity in, in, in the kingdom uh, called KAUST. Uh, and part of that will uh, help shape the programs that KAUST will be uh, focusing on based on the key priority areas of the national uh, agenda that will hopefully be established imminently, I hope. Um, second is, um, third is actually uh, another area which maybe isn't um, overly emphasized, but I, I still think it's equally as important. And that's um, the investment put in by industry itself um, to support uh, human capital development and knowledge transfer into this region uh, and not overly relying on the skills and capabilities that lie um, across the global uh, 
business areas, especially for international companies. And yes, I will call out um, some initiatives that we have established within Circo. So earlier this year, we launched our own space graduate program, specifically targeting in this, in the first instance, uh, Saudi Arabia, um, where we, uh, we've actually recruited a, a, a few graduates um, already, uh, and we will be taking them, um, th these are Saudi national graduates, we will be taking them through uh, operational training um, uh, through our, uh, with our operational contracts in uh, Europe. So this will give them first-hand exposure and insight into what happens um, on, uh, on an actual running contract and will help them develop some operational skills um, required to then bring back into the Saudi, in this case, the Saudi ecosystem. We hope to then um, grow this um, into further regions going for, forward, be it UAE, Oman, others um, that are growing uh, within this region itself. Second uh, is opportunity and policy. I think we'll all agree, we would all agree um, uh, on the point that without opportunities in the market, there is really um, no desire to establish uh, a sector uh, or for industry to establish a presence in the market itself. What we're starting, we, what we are seeing here is that um, what we all, space is a developing sector in this region. Now, yes, the UAE has been operating for quite some time in the region, um, but uh, a lot of the other uh, GCC states um, are um, formalizing space strategies or uh, are in the early phases of their, uh, of their space strategies itself. Um, uh, and with that uh, comes uh, an ignition from government to support this growth. Um, what do I mean by that? Um, uh, we're starting to see government backed, or we will start to see government backed programs uh, that are aligned with uh, clear national um, priorities, which gives, uh, uh, which gives impetus and gives uh, encouragement to the global um, industry to participate in, in um, the growth of the sector in this region. I think long term, uh, there is a desire, um, and, and it of course makes sense, there is a desire to move away from this reliance uh, from uh, government and more into uh, actual, I guess, B2B opportunities. So industry being uh, industry opportunities uh, being driven by industry itself and, and, and most likely non uh, uh, space sector uh, industries. <laughs> I think I hear somebody else on the line. Sorry, I can't see the camera, so I can't see who that is. But anyway, um, so yeah, I think there is a need, a need um, for that in, in the longer term. But um, for, in, in the near term, there will be a lot of support provided from government itself. Uh, with this, I think um, uh, when it comes to policy and, um, and regulation, that in order to encourage the growth of, of the sector here, we do need to see a light touch when it comes to regulation. Um, uh, and regulation probably more uh, uh, focused and emphasized on the upstream rather than uh, mid and downstream. Uh, and with that will naturally um, come a more competitive and an innovative uh, industry and also provide uh, opportunities for um, uh, more collaboration across the sector. Uh, and through several engagements that we have had with um, regulators across the sector, we know that there is an ambition for to support and to nurture startups uh, within this region. So in the UAE, for example, we've seen the launch of the space economic zones, and that's that's an ecosystem that enables uh, uh, startups, be it global startups or or national, nationally uh, based startups, to soft land within the region. And we are starting to see similar uh, similar messages come out of um, Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman, and others as well going forward. Uh, and of course, um, in terms of long term, there does need to be um, uh, more and more opportunities for cross sector collaboration. But I have a specific um, um, point on collaboration later on. Infrastructure, um, I think, uh, is essentially the soil in w which enables the plants uh, plants to grow. So we do need to have an infrastructure that's established to ins ensure that space ecosystem overall is uh, uh, is supported. Um, part of this may be physical, part of this may be digital. So when it comes to digital infrastructure, for example, data ecosystems, uh, we are, uh, again, both the UAE and also now uh, Saudi have established um, programs to support uh, the creation of, or, or actually have established um, uh, the creation of uh, today, of uh, data ecosystems to better uh, emphasize the need for commercial services rather than the actual 
data component itself, uh, because commercialization in the space sector, uh, uh, economic growth is driven by the user community. Yes, everything else um, uh, contributes to economic growth, but without users of satellite data, um, there uh, lacks the need for satellite infrastructure or space infrastructure itself, ground or space. Um, so having so, so supporting um, the creation of such a digital infrastructure is important. Uh, and we are starting to see that um, play out in, in the region. Actually, today, um, interestingly, we saw, uh, I'm not sure if this is linked to, to a space uh, um, agency itself, but we saw in Saudi Arabia, the one, one of the geospatial commissions in, uh, in the kingdom launching their own uh, uh, geospatial infrastructure program um, to support uh, the utilization of satellite data across different, or not only satellite data, but broadly speaking, geospatial data uh, across uh, many different um, uh, user communities uh, with, a, in this case, a core emphasis on climate related um, solutions and services. We, all, we, of course, need to establish more um, physical infrastructure um, to support national ambitions, uh, and and we do need public support to uh, public sector support to enable this. Uh, uh, recently, again in Saudi Arabia, we've seen um, uh, uh, the announcement of or or collaboration between the Saudi Space Agency and a Hong Kong based company, A Space, to establish satellite manufacturing launch um, facilities in the kingdom. Uh, we will, I guess, continue to see this type of uh, relationship um, and. Um, programs being established going forward in order to, to provide the right uh, infrastructure foundations for the sector to grow uh, going forward. Um, incubation and, and, and support mechanisms for startups, of course, that's, that's important. Um, there, are acceler there are existing accelerator programs in, in, in the UAE. Uh, Oman has ambitions to establish some as well. And I think they're, they're actively um, uh, uh, pursuing those ambitions. As, as Saudi Arabia um, have uh, delivered uh, some accelerated programs last year and are continuing to engage in that arena today. Uh, and when it comes to, to innovation management, um, of course, we do need more um, uh, efficient and effective IP management processes um, to ensure that we um, manage innovation sufficiently in the ecosystem. Uh, and my last um, uh, point is around collaboration. Uh, I think this is a point that has been talked about at length um, in numerous different forums. Um, uh, and, and yes, I, I say competition is important. Competition uh, is, is healthy for the sector. Um, but given the, the, the breadth and depth of the ambitions of the national agencies across the GCC, uh, without uh, sufficient uh, private sector collaboration, uh, it, it, it's will be very difficult to deliver uh, on uh, on the national priorities. Um, so I think we do really need to start thinking more as an ecosystem, thinking more as a community to to uh, ensure that uh, we deliver on um, uh, national priorities, which are quite um, quite wide. Uh, and yes, everything from establishing PPPs and various different mechanisms. Um, all the way through to government to government um, partnerships, which we do see with um, a lot of relations between um, European, American um, uh, space agencies and others as well. Uh, more collaboration between industry itself, be it local industry or in the international industry that are looking to maybe localize services within uh, within uh, um, the region uh, and definitely engagement, strong engagements with academia um, to help drive forward uh, innovative ideas and processes, because without academia, we don't really have a test bed for, for um, uh, new um, uh, solutions in the market. And, uh, and, and that is key for long-term growth. I think all in all, um, we, I think we're, we see that government um, uh, priorities, government uh, strategies that are established, uh, being established or have been established are really trying to find the sweet spot across all of these different four, all of these four uh, pillars, and this is an area that is is being nurtured by government and driven by government um, um, to ensure uh, really that there's a long there's an emphasis on sustainable uh, uh, space ecosystem growth, not just um, essentially a one hit wonder um, type approach. And all of this needs to be um, collectively enabled and supported by by everyone here, um, be it uh, academia, industry, startups, but also the uh, the investment community um, that um, can support startups as well. And really, my last slide is 
Serco, um, what do we do when it comes to this? Uh, we do see ourselves as being, uh, uh, I guess, ecosystem integrators um, in some in some way, shape, or form. At the end of the day, we see ourselves as being um, uh, a shop front in, in some. That's a way of, of representing that a shop front for government. So we uh, we work alongside and we partner with, with government to enable the services and the strategies that they have. And as a result of that, it, we we it's important for us to ensure that we have an ecosystem that that uh, uh, that we can um, that rely on that can support us in the delivery of services that we that we provide into into um, government and um, the industry on the whole. Um, so uh, when it comes to ecosystems, it's very important for us to establish. Uh, partnerships uh, across industries so i cannot name one project across our space service line globally that we have delivered independently uh, we always look to team up with um, other larger uh, providers or startups or um, uh, the smes to deliver or even academia um, it's important for us to to, to nurture uh, our relations with ac ac um, uh, academia so for example, in uh, Italy, we have a, a facility called Red Lab, uh, which uh, is very closely linked to some key institutions uh, in Italy. And in this institutions, in these institutions, we provide students with um, real life operational use cases for them to develop to 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 essentially conduct projects on to come up with more innovative solutions that that meet meet those um, operational needs and operational use cases. So. It's not just a hypothetical project, but this is actual bringing in our experience of understanding our clients and actually understanding the service and, and through the services that we offer directly to our clients uh, and supporting um, um, uh, students with actually providing um, uh, solutions that could actually be operationalized in, in the uh, mid to long term. And lastly, it's, it's around sort of startup um, um, ecosystems and startup um, support mechanisms that we provide. So in, in the UAE uh, earlier this year, we announced a partnership with uh, we ex extended a partnership with Starburst, who we have an existing relationship with in, in Europe. Um, Starburst being a, a um, um, accelerated innovation program in the aerospace domain, um, and and through this relationship, we uh, hope to both leverage the startup um, network they have uh, to support the growth of our own services within the Middle East uh, ecosystem. In this case, um, specifically in the UAE, um, but second is also to. Um, use the Starburst mechanism as a way of nurturing uh, more local um, uh, champions as well, uh, given the established um, infrastructure that Starburst already have. Um, uh, and we also do something similar with other other um, uh, uh, incubators or accelerators such as CDL um, and others within, within the ecosystem. I think all in all, for me, it's very important um, as I continue to explore what growth looks like for Serco in the Middle East, that we do not do this alone. I'm actively speaking with a lot of companies across uh, across the, a lot of companies, a lot of academic institutions, but also um, uh, likewise with government about how we can partner and enable services across this ecosystem to support um, the growth of uh, the ecosystem collectively. And that's pretty much it from me. Hopefully I'm I stuck to, the, to my time uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me there. And um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity for speaking. Thank you so much.